Hey, what is up? Hello, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Emma, and if you're not new here, then you already knew that. Today, I this is a very, very requested video, may I add, but I am going to be revealing to you all my Instagram secrets, um, tips or tricks, if you will. I don't know what we want to call them, but you get the idea. So I have like a little thing of notes here, which is what I'm going to be covering in this video. So I'm like looking at it to make sure that I don't miss anything out. I'm also running off a kombucha right now, so just bear with me, please. And apologies for the lighting. This is just, this is how it's going to be for this video. I'm going to be taking you guys through how I, sorry, I'm looking at the sticky notes again. Maybe I should just stick it up on the wall so I can like look. Now we're talking. So basically I'm going to take you guys through how I take my photos, how I edit them, as well as on my Instagram stories, how I do those stop motion type of video things and my funky stuff that I do. And no, these are not my original ideas. I have kind of stolen them from other videos that I've watched like this one, but I'm here to give you all of what I have come across and learned and I want to tell you guys what it is so you can up your Instagram game or whatever. So, first things first. Instagram, as you know, is about taking photos and that is a pretty vital part of the whole entire thing. So I'm going to give you guys some advice for taking Instagram photos. I take all of my photos on my phone. This is the iPhone 8 Plus, literally any phone will do. iPhones do tend to have pretty decent cameras for the most part. And I find, like, I'm not telling you to go and buy a new phone because that's ridiculous. When I'm actually taking the photo, if I'm not taking it myself and it's a photo of me that someone else is taking for me, I always make sure... Like, I tell them or I fix it afterwards. And that is having a straight horizon on your photos. This is literally the one tip I give to anyone who asks me about my Instagram game. Straight horizons on photos, like where the sky meets the earth or whatever you want to call it. Make sure that the line is straight across the screen, like so. That is a pretty vital part because you don't want the photo to look like the ocean's tipping off the side. So yeah, straight horizons are very important as well as good lighting. This is not a very good example because the lighting in this video right now is atrocious. However, in my photos on Instagram I do try and get um, good lighting. So not middle of the day when the sun is very harsh. In fact, overcast days are often better for lighting because there's no harsh lighting or anything and there's no shadows. Shadows are a very difficult thing to work with when editing photos as well as very harsh lighting because everything just looks very overexposed and blown out. Um, another thing is the rule of thirds. So right now on this camera that I'm filming on I have the rule of thirds. So there's a, I am literally looking, <laughs> there's a line here, a line here a line here and a line here. So that creates like one, two, three thirds and then thirds this way as well. So nine little squares. So you either have to position yourself in the center or on the line on this side or the line on this side. So that just creates a nice balanced photo. And if you're gonna position it on this side, then you can make the photo asymmetrical by placing something in this third. Normally when I get someone to take an Instagram photo for me, I stand them where, they, where I want the photo to be taken from and I position the camera exactly how I want it and then I go put myself in the photo. And I always get people to take a burst as well. Then you can go through and choose the photos that you want and just keep those ones that are, you know, good. That's basically what I do to take my photos. So now we get on to the editing of my photos. So I take all my photos on my phone and then drop them to my laptop. So I've got my laptop sitting here. So I edit all my photos using Lightroom. I do use presets and I use the Aspen Ovard presets. So I have two of her preset packs. So I have the regular one as well as the Instagram one and then I have I think it's the full one. I have that on the mobile one on my phone. But gonna be honest, don't use it because I'm not really a fan of it. It makes the photos look quite orange and red and I can't fix that by pulling the saturation down or whatever, which you'll see in a minute, which I do on the desktop version. But it doesn't, doesn't quite do it justice on the mobile app because obviously that has restrictions because you're not paying for the mobile app. But the Lightroom app for desktop is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud, which I am fortunate enough to get through school. So I edit the photos from my phone to my laptop to obviously edit them. I've just chosen a few photos from my recent trip to Fiji to show you guys how I edited them because you, you will see these photos on my Instagram if you follow me. If you if not, m.ma underscore Stevens. So I've imported these four photos but on the left hand side of the screen you will see scroll down these user presets which when you download Aspenovards presets it gives you instructions on how to import them into Lightroom. The first five with the number one in front are from her Instagram preset bundle and then the bottom five with no number one in front of them are just from her from her regular preset pack which is the one I primarily use. 
So as you can see here, I've got a photo of the beach in Fiji. Straight horizon, as you can see, running nice and pretty straight across the centre there. I think if I go like this, yeah, you can see. So the rule of thirds, you can see. So if I pull this down, you'll see how this, yeah, the horizon's very straight, which is what we want. If you hover over without clicking on them, you can see the different presets and how they change the colouring of the photo. So Dreamy and Everyday are the ones I tend to use the most. So for this one, I normally I go through and I kind of like think which one I like, but I, I quite like Dreamy on this particular photo. So if I click on that, then it selects it. And if I go down here where there's got the two like double Y things, which says cycles between before and after view, I can see the photo before and how it now looks with the preset on it. So this one um, is pretty good. I probably wouldn't make any adjustments to this particular photo. Often photos, if they're not shot in RAW, which RAW is what you shoot with when you are taking photos on a DSLR camera, that just strips a photo right back to all of like the colours and things. When it's shot in RAW, you have to make less adjustments as such, or it makes it easier to make adjustments because it like individually picks out colours and things a lot better. So yeah, that's that photo. That's like a landscape photo. So the next photo is, again, slightly different because there's shadows and things, which isn't the best of things to work with. But again, I go through. It's like that one's way overexposed. That one kind of looks a bit artificial. That one looks really, like, you know, they're, they're quite different presets. Um, that's quite funky. I quite like that. That's quite cool. Dreamy again. Every day, oh no, every day was that one. But every day, you can see like the photo kind of looks like it's zooming in and out. That's because it's like warping the photo to an extent and just changing like the skew of it and things like that. This one, again, I probably go with the every day. I quite like the summer one though. Oh no, was it beachy? I quite like that, but I think I'll go with dreamy again. Now this is another photo again from Fiji. Nice straight horizon with the ocean in the background. And if I go through the presets, this, the, I find the first five are quite overexposing of the image. The general rule that I use is the first five, they bring out the lighter colours, so I use those for photos that are taken indoors or in like darker places. And then the next five, which I'm going into now, from the first preset pack are for images that are taken outside. So again, dreaming every day. So Dreamy and Everyday are the ones I said to primarily use, but for these particular photos, I think Dreamy looks the nicest. I mean, everyone's got their personal taste, but again, if I want to like, you know, zoom in, say on this bit, and like look at the colours, I can zoom in and like compare to that small part. And this one's a bit different. So this is a photo that's actually on my Instagram, so now I exposed, I know you can see what it looked like before I edited it. But I'm going to edit it again for you guys, I don't know if I'm going to edit it the same, because you know, I can't even remember what I did last time, to be fair. But if I go through, like, see, incredibly overexposed. And this photo isn't probably a good example because if you look at the top, kind of to the left, you'll see that it's a very bright patch, which is very overexposed, which doesn't really help in the editing process. So that one, like you see here, they start making my skin tones look very orange. Again, you can see, sort of like that makes me look very artificially tan. But then Dreamy, again, that's the one I normally tend to go for. Like, I, I know it doesn't look fully natural, but it just looks a lot more natural. And then Every Day is kind of nice as well. That brings out the darker colors. But since I tend to go for the brighter vibe, again, I normally use Dreamy. And I can zoom in. And um, this really isn't a very good example, but I zoom in on my face normally. And then if I think it's too orange, I can drag back the oranges and make myself a little bit more pale or drag them up make me like you know a bit of a carrot so normally I adjust that like say bring it up a little bit and then bring the luminance up which makes my skin kind of like you know a bit brighter and that's normally what I do for my Instagram photos I mean it varies with every photo as you saw then I kind of some of them needed changes others didn't so normally ones with my skin tone in it since they are taking on my phone rather than to shot on raw on a DSLR camera I do have to alter my skin tones a little bit I, I would never use Photoshop to manipulate my body though because that's just that's way too far way 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 too far so now I'm gonna go on to my Instagram stories so you'll see when I do like video countdowns and things I have like the little thumbnail of the video with like the little frame around it. The app I use for that I feel like a lot of people have caught on to this now but I use this app called Unfold which is on my phone 
I'll put a photo of the icon so you guys can see, but it's free on the app store, but you do have to pay to buy certain packs and things. I went through a phase of just buying them, so I honestly couldn't tell you which ones I bought and which ones are free, but I know the one that I use to make my thumbnails, like my thumbnail advert teaser things, that definitely costs, I think it's like maybe like $1.79 or something. It's very, very reasonable. And when I actually post an Instagram story, as you'll notice in my videos with my outro and stuff, my color of my channel like my brand color is like a blush pink i do tend to follow that through to my instagram by when i post an instagram story i use the same pink color because i'm pretty sure the pink color on my youtube i originally got from the instagram stories so yeah i try and keep that consistency flowing right through to my instagram stories and another thing that i get questions about probably multiple times a week is how i do my stop motion videos that look like this or like this but I'm here to tell you. The thing is, it's probably already on your phone. If you edit your photos using Visco, it is already on your phone. If you open Visco and tap the little button up in the corner and hit Disco, here I'll do a little Disco of this. So if you hold down like that, then it takes a video and does it all for you and you can kind of swipe through and do like different filters but I always do the just a standard A6 filter. But yeah, that is all that there is to that. So a lot of you probably didn't even realise that that was a feature on Visco. I didn't, I found out from Jess Conti's video and I've been using it ever since. I know lots of people don't like those sorts of videos but I know, I don't know, I think they're kind of cool. That kind of concludes this video of my Instagram secrets. If you guys have any questions please feel free to drop them down below and I'll try my best to answer all you guys questions but apart from that thank you guys so much for watching thank you for supporting my channel and yeah you guys are the best instagram spotify snapchat pinterest it's all linked down below make someone smile and i will catch you guys in my next video Peace out, Scout. bye also content merch okay cool that's why am i looking so red excuse me oh my gosh i'm going red again why am I so red? I I'm actually not this red in person, it's just the lighting.